Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video we're going to try to fix up this Vax carpet cleaner. So this is one that shoves out the water in the detergent and sucks it back up again, which apparently is tripping the electric. So I bought it from eBay for 20 something pound. It's kind of a basic model, it's a lightweight one, so it's quite cheap as well. They're roughly about 100 pounds new. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, plug it into the extension lead here. I'm going to use this breaker that I fixed up in a previous video. This was sent over from Gadget UK a while ago. And I want to see if it trips that or would it still trip my uh, my fuse board, you know, my uh, consumer unit. I think it will be I think it'll be interesting to see because I don't know if that's going to be more sensitive than the consumer unit. I doubt it. But anyway, what could be causing it? Because it's not going to be a huge amount of stuff in here. I presume it's going to be water related. Condition of it looks okay it does need a clean but these things once you use them once kind of look pretty rough on the inside anyway i've had a look in the tank here and i can it's rattling around the place i can see one of those little fishing things that you know that you attach it's like little spinners that you attach the bait to so there's one of them in there so i don't know how much use it has but it looks pretty new so let's plug it in and see what it's doing you don't need to mention about it being coiled up here it's only for testing i don't want to have to unravel 50 meters of it to wind it back up again okay i don't actually know if this is on or off what we'll do is let's see if we get any resistance reading on the meter when we go across the pins because it is tripping isn't it so maybe we might see a reading on here that will indicate that so between live and neutral Nothing. Let me just see my meter's working. Yes. I'm going to go between live and earth and neutral and earth. Right, well, there's nothing there. I'm just going to turn it on here on the actual thing, see if that makes any difference. I don't know if that could be off there. I don't know if that's on or off. Right, now we have something. So I would say that's on. Well, there you go, 16 ohms across it. I'm not going to, but it is climbing. I'm not going to plug that in. Look at that. 16 ohms across that, that is going to trip, isn't it? I'm not plugging that in. Nothing to earth. Thing is, though, you're going to want to see it tripping, aren't you? Yeah, 9 ohms. Uh, oh. I wonder, is the motor jammed? Let's see. I feel uncomfortable plugging that in. Well, you know what? That suddenly freed itself up, didn't it? It made it sound like it made a noise and then it freed itself up. Let's see now if we've still got that racing on here. Imagine if it was just a, a motor that was a bit seized. 81 ohms. Mmm. I wonder now. It's certainly higher because it was 11 before. I wonder was the motor seized? I think I'm going to plug it in and see. I reckon it's going to work. Right, okay. Turn it off here. And let's see what's going to happen. Right, I am going to plug it in now. We're still on there. Right, let's uh, use my foot with my slipper on. Apologies. Just going to loosen that down. Here goes. Interesting. Why is it behaving like that? That seems weird, but we've still got power. It hasn't tripped anything. Has it? Oh, something. oh, oh, funny smell, burning smell, burning smell. Yeah, right, there's very much a burning smell coming from it. It didn't trip though, did it? Right, let's take it apart. That absolutely stinks. Yeah, that smells, something's definitely burning in there. 
All right then, well, look, it gave some sort of power, didn't it? It like went, stopped, went, stopped. I think there's something wrong with the, the motor or maybe the brushes on the motor. Let's see if we can get it all apart and see what's going on. Obviously I'm unplugged. So this is the thing, there's rattling stuff around there. So we have to clean all that out. Got a filter here. That's about it. Let's get over to the map and see what's going on. Right, so there's numerous screws down here to undo. This one looks like it's completely rusted through. But uh, yeah, should be all right. Now I thought a big device like this would be easy to take apart, especially when you can see a load of screws underneath. I undone all those screws. Yes, the brush comes out okay, and you know, the front part of it if you need to get access to the belt. But it just didn't seem to want to separate into two halves. So what I did then is just undone all the screws I could see everywhere, even on the handle, just in case I thought, well, I don't know, maybe there's something coming up that's holding it in place. There wasn't, it was a bit sneaky. Basically, there's screws hidden behind the wheels. You need to take the wheels off in order to get to the remaining screws in order to separate the two halves of this carpet cleaner. And to get the wheels off, they're held in with little circlips. So a little bit uh, a little bit annoying, not quite as accessible as I thought it was going to be. But anyway, once I undo the circlips, the wheels come off. It gives me access to the screws in the kind of wheel arch of this machine. And then it allows the two halves to separate. So I'm just vacuum cleaning up the mat now. And then we'll stop the fast forward where you can see me just about to take off the lid to see what's inside. Right now, here we go. What lies inside? I can hear things rattling everywhere. So, okay, some sort of explosions happen there, isn't it? What is it? Also, look, we have a, uh, what's that? what was that holding on? It's going through here. Mm, unless it just fell there. Right, this is a lot worse than I expected, so now, what is happening? Yeah, there's this black plasticky stuff absolutely everywhere. It looks like one of the carbon brushes has exploded. Would that be right? Can't get it. Right, so one of the brushes is gonna be in here. The other one is gonna be in the bottom. So is that what the problem is? I mean, I can see this top one. Well, mind you, I can see the metal. I can't see any brush itself. Do you know what? I just don't know what's going on here. There's uh, broken cable ties everywhere. Another one here. Okay, so that's how that works. That's just incredibly simple. Look at that. Just press that and it releases it. Right, I think we need to... Oh, here we go. Here's the... Uh... Must have been a little fire in here. Look, that's completely melted. So that's where one of the cable ties is. So it looks like the winding of the motor. That's all come away from. Uh, it's come away from that. Well, we know it's spun, didn't we? Because we heard it. it sounded like it spun. I think it's going to be to do with the brushes. Let's take out this one here, and let's see. Let's see what it's doing. Is it going to be here? Yes, it is. Okay, bit damaged there, but it is there. Right, could it be the one underneath? How do you take this out? Oh look, and that's how you change the uh, the thing from above. Yeah. So it looks like you do have to take it all. I think you would be able to take it apart from the bottom, but you might struggle getting the actual belt round. Well, with this way, you see, you can take it off and get it from here. A lot of work though, isn't it? Right, let's see if this one is intact. Well, that's there as well. So what has actually broken on this? 
I mean, it looks very crusty. Has water just got into it? Bearings seem all right, a little bit noisy here. They seem all right, look, that's just come out. See, these are all coming out of it. I'm gonna say now I don't think it's gonna be repairable. I think it probably needs a, probably needs a new motor. So although it looks like we're not gonna be able to fix this unless we were to get a replacement motor, it would be nice to still get into the failed motor to see maybe what was the actual cause of the failure. Why has this shorted? What's happened inside? Annoyingly, looking into a replacement motor, at this moment in time, they don't actually appear to be for sale. I typed in the model number and similar ones come up in America, but they're a lower voltage than here in the UK. And the ones over here that look similar haven't got the spindle that sticks out for the actual belt that drives the front agitating brush, the rotation, rotating brush at the front. So they would be made for vacuum cleaners. So there's plenty of motors that look similar, but not my exact one, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, I wanna get into the motor to see what has failed. Unfortunately, you need a socket set. Annoyingly, they're all in the Rolls Royce at the moment around my dad's, so uh, yeah. I mess around a little bit with an adjustable spanner, but all, I, all I'm doing is really rounding off the nuts. So I, I need to just leave it be, otherwise I'm gonna make it so I can never get into it. And I do need to take this to my dad's. I'm not gonna take it today, I'll take it another day. But in the meantime, I'm just looking at the actual item itself to try to work out how it works. So I just wanna show you a little bit of that because I think I understand how it works. And then we'll go to my dad's shed where I actually try to get this motor apart. Now, let me just show you what I think, I could be wrong, but we know that the water gets sucked up here because I've seen it working on other carpet cleaners. It's kind of a nice little design thing to show people all the dirty water coming up. We know the motor's responsible for creating the suction, just like a vacuum cleaner. Now, the water is stored in this tank here, and I was wondering, well, how does it get to the front? Basically, it just, slots into the top here and when you press this button which is releasing the water all you're doing is there's a little thing in here that moves yeah so that moves that little button in there which in turn opens up this valve and that will allow the water from here to go through the valve down this pipe here down this pipe to the front. So it's purely gravity that's letting the water flow through. When you press this, there isn't like a motor that's suddenly kicking into life. It's just opening up the valve to let gravity push the water down from you know the weight off the water. Anyway, so that's that, that's quite straightforward. And I was trying to work out how the suction works because we know this motor is spinning in here. So it's gonna be creating suction around this area. And I was thinking, well, how does that actually get to this front bit here? Well, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's quite clever. So what happens is you see this thing here. The suction is created from this bit. So this also fills with water, but look how it's designed on the inside. Can you see if I, uh, I don't know if it's going to come across? Can you, well basically can you see that there's a tube going up from here and it goes up to the top there. So basically this top bit and there's another tube from here that goes up to here so what happens is there's air in the top bit here and the bottom bits full of water and I think you're gonna realize in a few seconds now why this failed so what's happened is the motors creating suction through this bit here which is sucking through here which in turn is making this whole thing suck which goes through here to here this thing is connected to the black bit at the front there, which in turn goes to that black rubber bit there, which in turn goes to this bit, which sucks it up. So essentially, this is joined to this bit here, and it's all sucking this way through. So I presume the volume of water there must be the same as the safe amount here, the empty here level. So from here across to here must be the same as that there. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is this is gonna flood. 
if this was too small and this was too big, this would fi keep filling and filling and filling and filling with water. A bit may leak out here, a little bit. This is where you empty out the dirty water. But what will happen is it will go up to these pipes at the top here and then it's going to go into this pipe here because that's also open at the top to create the suction up there in front of the red thing and then it's going to uh, flood through this area here into the motor so i think that's what's happened here there is a float thing here which i'm not actually sure what the float thing does i presume the float thing goes off yes the float goes up to shut off this top bit for that exact reason if you forget to empty it but I think the float mustn't be that perfect. So if you fail to empty the waste water from here, via here, when you fill up that, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with two lots of them in here, which is gonna put it way over the safe empty level here. And then I suppose you've got way more chance of that float not working perfectly and allowing bits of water through into the motor area. I think that's it anyway. So, right, let's go to my dad's shed and let's see what's happening with this motor down here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting this screwdriver, wedging it in here, you see, and then I'm gonna be using this here. And I'm gonna to try to undo it while holding this and hopefully between both of them, I'll be able to manage to get it undone. Right, I haven't got my tripod with me. So let me just see if I can get an angle here. No, that's just, I've just rounded it. Let me try to get a, not, nine mil's gonna be too big, but let me go over to, uh, you know, the inch ones and see if I can get one of those to fit. Right, this is three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna hammer this on. Let's see if this is gonna do the job. Right, it's turning. Hold on one second. Is that turning the bottom? Bear with me. No, that is turning. Excellent. We got it. Yuppie! Such a nice feeling when something gives. There's going to be a lot of repair to this if I can get it working. I'm just curious as to where all this damage has come from. Why are you just spinning like this and not, uh, are you actually loosening up at all? Oh, hold on. It's not spinning at the bottom. But at the same time, this bolt isn't coming off. What's going on? Oh, here we go. Here we go. We are in. Result, I'm not quite sure where that undone from. What earth's going on? There's no thread, have I just pulled this straight out without actually, uh... what? This hasn't come undone whatsoever. I've just pulled, <laughs> I've just pulled it straight out. So all that work I was trying to do, I could have just lifted it straight out. That's annoying. It came off nice. Right, so. Wow, okay. Well, that's all intact there. Apart from being burnt, I think this looks okay. Got a nice little bearing on it. Right, let's have a look down in here, see what we can see. So, this is the stuff that's all come out of it. But this is just cable ties and like resin and stuff, isn't it? So surely, surely it should still work, no? Unless the windings have gone. I'm, fa I'm, I'm, I'm failing to see why it's not uh, working. I'm wondering if I was just to clean it all now and get rid of the loose bits of plastic around the place, whether it would actually uh, start working. We know, I think the initial cause was water getting in here and it's overheated, you can see these are all parts of the cable ties that are used to bind these together. Because obviously I suppose there's a risk if it's not all cable tied that these could short against here. And obviously then you are gonna get a full on short. But, you know, they're uh, they're all, uh, look like they're kind of glued together. So, I wonder have they failed? I'm thinking they haven't because it did give a bit of sound, didn't it, at the beginning of the video. 
Right, I don't think I need to stay in the shed to do this. I think I can just clean it all out at home with some IPA, get it all looking clean. Then I think we can put it back together. Now, imagine if it didn't come out now. Uh-oh. Yes. I think rather than use IPA, because IPA might separate the, the glue off the windings, I think I might just use a wet wipe and clean it all up. Then we're going to have to try to measure the windings. I mean, I don't know how many, just, would it just be two windings in here? Because we've got a big coil here and a big coil here. Where do they go to? So to test this winding, I need to go on this one and and this one. Right, so if I go between here and here, that's gonna be testing one winding. Come on, be good to me. Hey, that looks all right, 13 ohms. You know, that's not a direct short, is it? Like that. Oh, maybe it's my leads. Oh, my leads are playing up a little bit. This happened, this meter just is uh, quite all over the place when it comes to uh, ohms reading. Okay, right, so we've got a three ohm short there now. What have we got here? Eight ohms, okay. You know, that might be okay. That might be okay, five ohms across the across across the, the the winding. Yeah, three ohms, okay. So that was that one and this one. So now let's do this one and this one. Is it similar? Eight ohms, fantastic. Right, I'm gonna clean it up. I think I'm prepared to plug it in with that. So I'm just cleaning out all the old carbon burnt deposits with a wet wipe. And then what I'm gonna do is show you some cable ties that I've just wrapped around the actual coils. And then I wanna put the motor back together. And I just wanna do a resistance test again when it's back together to see what it's reading. So I've got my cable ties and I just wrapped one around here, one around here, one around here. I presume what it's to do is if this is like enameled wire, if a couple of strands went short, it could start hitting against the casing and then with a little bit of vibration it might wear away the enamel and then you're going to have a short from the mains to the casing here which would uh which this is going to be this is going to be earth isn't it so i've done that one done that one i need to work out what's going on with this black one up here and then i need to cable tie that out of the way and i need to cable tie i think here as well you can see that there's a mark here so that would have been cable tied to this i just want to start roughly putting it back together so i know uh, you know i know where the wires go so while we're doing this let's take some time out to shout out the my mate vince massive the members of the massive this month are kitsdigital.com kip hakes max rokotansky having fun repairs chris seal felipe at mrkeebs.com dj vg pigsy robert from timsey's auto air daniel watson zeke c anthony dean baza 2 russ melanson ellis garbert Gaspar Heller, Richard Berglund, and Jacob Culpin. Many thanks, guys. Well, I think that is all back into its place, and I've given it a whack down there. I've straightened up these that I did them the other day. So uh, I'm thinking it should still, if it does spin, create suction, if it spins. So now let's just see what happens if we go across these and uh, here, see if it's shorting out at all. Right, so it's not short in there, so that shouldn't cause anything to trip. Let's try this one. And it's not short in there, so that shouldn't cause anything to trip. That's the, the motor there, YDC51A-2-1. And annoyingly, I can't find them. Not in the UK, not UK ones, you know, not 240, 220 to 240 volt ones. But they will come up. I think this just it items too new at the moment. Right now, let's see if I was to go across here and here in here and in here. Right, 12 ohms, I think that looks good. Let's, uh, I keep saying that, don't I, but I don't know what my meter's reading. Right, one ohm, good, fantastic. Right, so we're reading 12 ohms through the brushes, yeah? Now, let's start turning it and see if it changes much.
because I suppose we'd want it all roughly to be the same. There's a big change there. But saying that, it's staying there now. Maybe the brushes have just kind of gone into a different orientation. Now we're back down. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's very good, is it? Because it means we're reading different things as we're turning. Well, you know, I'll put it together and we'll see what happens. And then I'll just have to wait until the new motor pops up on eBay. And they will do. As the months go on, or maybe next year, there'll be, uh, there'll be loads of these uh, coming up. It's just the item's too new just right now. And I'm sure I'll get one for about £20. Let's plug in and see if it's still doing that vroom vroom thing. Right, it's going to take me quite a while to get it back together because it took me a long time to get it apart, but uh, I'll get there. The next time you see this, we'll be ready to uh, turn it on and see if it trips, see what it does, see if it goes on fire. Should be interesting. Okay, so I'm ready for the big power on. I've given everything a nice good clean and it looks a lot better than it did before. I've uh, put this into the bath and gave it a good rinse out, but I still couldn't get to all the hair and stuff up here. But it's a bit cleaner than it was. This is what was flying around inside it. So let's plug this in and see what it's going to do. So every there's no water or anything in, in, in at the moment. I just want to see if it's going to if it's going to come alive. I don't know if it's on or off. Right. Okay. Must be off. Right. Here we go. Are oh, you going to do what you need to do? Let's see. Ready? No! Whoa, okay, there we go. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Yep, the, uh, it shorted out the electrics. Ah. Oh. Do you know, I would have thought that would have worked. I'm going to have to leave that down to the comment section then to tell me what was wrong there. Is it the windings? Are the windings melted together? And that 3 ohm reading? Oh, I can really smell the burn in there. Yeah. Is the 3 ohm... <laughs> 3 ohm reading, is that far too... You know, is, 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 it all, is it like basically just a massive clump of copper rather than the winding going around? Maybe it should be a 40 ohm reading or something like that. I'm not too sure. Right, I had said my goodbyes, I was just packing away, lights are back on now, and check this out. The motor is completely seized. This isn't turning at all now, and that should turn quite easily. In fact, earlier on it was turning quite easily. So yeah, there we go, the motor's locked up, so that's why it tripped, because I suppose it's just the same as putting the live and neutral together. Interesting. What a shame. Anyway, it will be fixed one day when this is not quite so new because this is still a current product available for sale right now in places like Argos. So once the year guarantee is up and they start failing, then people start stripping them down, selling them parts on eBay. Or for example, there might be some other damage done on it and then it doesn't work properly. So they strip it down and the motor hopefully will be fine. And then I can pop it in here and it will all be fixed again. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up. Hopefully on the next item I fix, whatever it will be, I'll be able to fix it without needing spares that I can't currently get. Thanks for watching everyone.